In the videos in this chapter, I'm going to describe various ways of architecting your Java classes to accomplish certain coding goals. I'll be talking about static fields and initializing them, and various kinds of classes, including inner and anonymous classes. I'll start in this video with static initializers. It's very common to initialize the values of fields in constructor methods. For instance, in this class, olive.java, this version of the constructor method initializes the olive name field, a public string, by assigning it a value that's passed in when the constructor method is called. But you can also have static fields. I showed one very popular use of static fields in the Java Essential Training course. In this olive class, I'm using a literal value of 0x, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0 to represent the color black, but to minimize coding errors, I might choose to use a public static final field that looks like this. I'll place the cursor within the olive class and type in public, static, final, and then the data type long, and I'll assign the field a name of black. Something that's static and final is essentially a constant, and by convention we name those kinds of identifiers with all uppercase. I'll assign it the value that currently is used here. In fact, I'll just cut and paste that value into the new line of code. Then I'll come back to the original line of code and press control space, and there's my value of black. So now, whenever I want to reference the value of black, I can reference the constant. Initializing a simple value like this typically is done on a single line of code. I'm identifying all of the modifiers, public, static, and final, then the data type, and the variable name and identifier. And I'm assigning the value in the same line. But when you're dealing with complex objects as static values, this can get a little bit more cumbersome. I'll demonstrate this by creating a new class that I'll name Olive Jar. I'll put it in the same package as the Olive class. I'll create a new class, and I'll name it Olive Jar, and I'll click Finish. Now, within the class definition, I'll get rid of any generated code. I'll declare a public static class. I'll give it a data type of array list. I'll make sure that I have an import for that class by pressing control space. And I'll set the generic data type to olive. I don't need an import for that class because it's in the same package. And I'll name this variable olives. Now the question is, how do I initialize this? I could create an incredibly long bit of code that's essentially one statement where I call the constructor method of the array list, and then within the constructor method call, pass in an already existing object, but the code would be messy and hard to read. So instead, I'm going to create a static initializer. I'll place the cursor after the declaration of the field, olives. I must do the static initializer after that bit of code because that variable must have already been declared. I'll type in the word static, and then I'll create a code block. Any code you type here will be executed the first time any of the static fields of this class are referenced anywhere else in the application. Within the static initializer, I'll first instantiate the array list, calling its constructor method. Because I'm in Java 7, I don't need to redeclare the generic. I already declared it in the original variable declaration. I do, however, need my equals operator I do, however, need my equals assignment operator so that I'm getting the reference to the olives class from the ArrayList constructor. Now, I'll add instances of the olive class to the ArrayList. I'll call olives.add, and within the add method, I'll pass in a new instance of the olive class, and I'll use the version of the constructor method that receives a string and a long for the color. Once I finish that line of code, I'll duplicate it a couple of times. Working on Windows, I pressed Control, Alt, and the down arrow. And if you're working on Mac, press Command, Option, and the down arrow. And then, and then I'll change the name and color of the second olive to Pickline and Green. I'll save my changes. This class is now complete. I'll go back to my main method, static int. Within the main method, I'll declare an array list referencing the olive class. And just as I did in the olive jar class, I'll name it olives. But this time, instead of constructing the object within the main method, 
I'll simply get a reference to the static object that's a member of Olive Jar. Then I'll add a for loop. I'll use the for loop. I'll use a for each loop. Within the parentheses, I'll set a data type of olive, and I'll say that I'm creating a variable named O, which I get from the olives list. Then within the for loop, I'll do a little bit of system output, and within the println method, I'll pass in a string of its A, and then I'll append o.olivename, and then I'll complete the output with the word olive. And I'm ready to save and test my code. I'll choose File, Save All to make sure I've saved all of my classes. I'll scroll over to the left to make sure I'm showing all of the code. And then I'll run the code, and I'll see that I'm looping through the array list of all of objects and dealing with them each one at a time. Now, I'll go back to my Olive Jar class and add system output to show where this code is being executed. I'll place the cursor within the static initializer, and I'll output the word initializing. And I'll save and run again and show that that code is being executed before I get to the looping. And finally, I'll come back to the static init method, and I'll add a little bit more debugging, once again using system output. And I'll output the string starting application. And I'll run the code and show that that first output happens before the static initializer is called. Once again, static initializers are called the first time a static object is referenced anywhere in the application. But it's only called once. No matter how many references I have to the Olive Jar class, that static initializer will only be called the first time it's needed, the first time that object has to be initialized. Static initializers are great for initializing the values of complex objects or wherever you need to do any logical operations, including evaluating current state of the application before you assign the one and only value to the static object.